So now that we're in the Mercator projected coordinate system, you can see that the readout here says uh, is now in units that are closer to uh, linear measurement, and these should actually be in meters. And we can check that by going to View Measure, Measure Line. And here we can start to measure it, and you can see the Central Park because of about a kilometer across, which sort of makes sense. Okay, so now that we have it projected into a projected coordinate system we can do our heat map so in order to do the heat map uh, we have to enable the plugin a heat map comes as one of QJS as built-in plugins but by default it's not installed so the first thing we have to do is go to manage plugins and we have to turn heat map on so make sure the check mark uh, is checked click OK so once we have that installed we can go to raster heat map or we can click this icon in the toolbar and it comes up with this interface it will ask us for the uh, point file that we want to use to generate the heat map and we want to pick our P file it will ask us to name our raster file so we'll just call it heat map and here it will tell us to specify what radius each uh, pixel will basically look at uh, when creating the heat map so you can think of this as a weight, and you can play around with this. Um, I'll start with something like 800. So basically, that means that it will each pixel will look and see how many points are within 800 meters of it. And here are some advanced options. Uh, basically, this is the, your resolution of the final image, and this is the number of pixels across. And this is the number of pixels down. This depends on how big your point data set is. But here you see basically the dimension that each pixel will take. And I'll make this a little bit bigger just to increase the resolution. Okay, click OK. And it's basically going to generate uh, the heat map. This might take a little while. So once your heat map is done calculating, it will bring up this uh, same coordinate system selection window and ask you to select the coordinate system for your heat map. And we'll just pick this World Mercator projected system again. So click OK, and by default, when your heat map comes in, it'll just be gray. Uh, so what you want to do to visualize the actual heat map uh, is go to Properties, and under Style, here, instead of grayscale, pick Pseudo Color, and click Apply, and now you should see your actual heat map image. So click OK. Now we have a pretty good representation of the heat map. Now in QGIS, uh, you can keep this as it is. You can do a few other things to visualize this better. For instance, wherever there's blue area is actually where the uh, raster is zero value. So what we can do is go back to properties and uh, under transparencies, we can set any time there is a zero value to be 100% transparent, which will basically create transparency everywhere there's no uh, heat. So in order to do that we can create a new value here, specify this as 0 and then leave this as 100. And if we click apply you can see that it creates transparency everywhere there's no uh, there's no heat. Uh, unfortunately um, there's no simple way to uh, preserve the colors of this heat map in the TIFF so even though you can visualize it in QJS it's actually a little bit complicated to uh, put put these colors into the heat map itself um, so we won't be able to easily bring in the raster image into a tile mill but what we can do is actually create contour lines from this heat map and bring those uh, into a tile mill as vector layers so in order to do the contours we can go into uh, the raster tab and under extraction contour so what Contour will do is it will basically take a raster file and I'll put Contour uh, lines as a shape file. So here we'll go into my folder and I'll do heat map contours. Okay, and I'll tell it how often I want it to create the contours. So I'll just leave it at 10. And we can also create an attribute within um, the shape file for the elevation 
and click OK. So it should have created my new contour file. Uh, I'll find it here and we can import it into the scene. You can see that it took contours at every level depending on my designation. So if that's not enough contours, uh, I can change this here, specify a new file name, click OK, it'll process it, and then I can bring that in here. And I'll just remove that previous one. So now I have my contour lines in ArcGIS, and I can actually import those into TileMill as well using the same process as before. Um, I'll browse to where that file is. Heat map contours. And then I'll save and style it. And now I can style that layer uh, the same as the previous one. Okay, so that's pretty much all I wanted to show in TileMill. And once we have this map, um, I'll show you how to import it into the file that the map that we were working on uh, in Mapbox. Before I do that, I'll just quickly um, change the style of this NYC base layer. And I just want to take away the polygon fill and the polygon opacity I'll change to zero. And it's just to take away the fill. So when we import all this data into um, Mapbox, we won't see any of those fills. We'll get the base map and we'll just get the lines um, that we have here. To bring this data into Mapbox, we first want to export this map out of TileMill. So we go to the export uh, options here. And TileMill has a variety of options to export maps. Um, as just still maps, so you can create PNGs, PDFs, uh, and create um, map images. But to bring it into Mapbox, we want to export as this MB tiles format. And this format will save all the tile information at a variety of zooms. So then when it comes into Mapbox, uh, you can interact with it and zoom in, zoom out of the data. So I'll click MB tiles here, and it's going to have a variety of options. Uh, first you specify the name and the file name and then it's going to ask you where the center of the data is. So if we zoom in on our data we can select the starting zoom range by holding shift and dragging a window here and this will basically set the, the first uh, zoom that we have once we load the map. And in here, in this slider, you can specify which zoom levels will be supported by your map. You can see if we have 0 to 22, it's going to create a ton of tiles because it will basically create tiles to accommodate any zoom level from the world down to the street level. So what we want to do is basically use this navigation to see at which zoom level our data should read. So maybe I want to go all the way from uh, 10. So once I zoom into New York, I start to see the data. So I'll set 10 as the minimum. And if I zoom in here, maybe I want uh, the data to be visible all the way up to this zoom level, so 15. And once I do that, it tells me how many tiles I'll be saving and what the total file size will be. So now it's one megabyte, which I think is OK. And then I can also set the center point uh, just by clicking on uh, where the center point should be. So now that I have that set up, I can go to export and it'll basically export my tiles uh, information. So once that's done exporting, it'll be in your queue and you actually have to click on save and save MB tiles and it will save that file into your documents folder by default. So here I have my NYC TA attractions and B tiles file. So once you have that file, you can go to Mapbox and you can go to upload layer. Once you're in upload map, you can choose the file and here you can navigate to your MB tiles file. Click open, upload file.
So once that's done uploading, you can tell it uh, to create a new map. And it'll process your upload. So once it's processed your upload, the map will come in. And it actually comes in as its own Macbox map uh, with the name you specified. But what you can do is actually import all of the layers from any map into any other map in Mapbox. So what I'm going to do is actually go back to the map I was setting up before. Zoom in to New York. So here I have my base layer uh, with all the streets and names and everything kind of formatted the way I want. And in uh, my customize now, I can actually add custom layers. If I go in here, I can select which uh, map file I want to uh, import the layers from, and I'll click my NYC TA Attractions map file. You see here it's actually brought in those layers from NYC TA Attractions into my base map. So here I can still adjust everything in my base map as before, but I have this overlay of uh, other layers that I brought in from tile mill over them. And you can see that as I zoom in and out, those things get adjusted because everything is being referenced as a tile file. And if I zoom in beyond the point where I saved it out, it will actually disappear. And same thing if I zoom out too far. So that's how you can sort of specify at what scale your data makes sense and have it be dynamic and linked to this base map file. So once I'm happy with my map, I can save changes and I can publish it. And this works pretty similar to um, the way that CardoDB publishes maps. It basically gives you a link. So if you copy this URL and paste it, I'll actually get my map. So just like before, this is a fully interactive map. It's overlaid onto a base map and you can interact with the data at various scales. So that was just a brief overview of two tools uh, that you can use to bring in your data. Um, you can process it using QGIS and you can bring in that data into a web-based interactive format.